Mike here in the shop, in the lab. Uh, I needed a heat source for the uh, for the lab here because with my fridge, my my my, my fridge I'm testing, uh, I like to keep relatively stable temperatures, and I'd like to get rid of some of these little uh, sawtooth spikes. Um, and I was using a small electric space heater. Uh, it's 1500 watt. Low setting is 750 on a thermostat, and uh, it was too much for this this space. It would heat up rapidly. Uh, the air would stratify in here and it wouldn't mix well. So here we have a heat pump. Um, not wasn't too interested in building a heat pump. I really didn't have my uh, my heart in it, but I felt like I needed to get it done. And uh, I'll show you in a minute the uh, what I think is the interesting part. So this is a refrigerator compressor. It's a small compressor. Uh, it's rated at 1.26 full load amps. Um, I'm kind of uh, beating the hell out of it a little bit. Uh, for what I'm doing here, but it uh, seems to be more than enough to keep this place warm. Uh, so the compressor and the uh, the condenser that's back in there is actually just one of those steel black tubes uh, serpentine back and forth and then folded over a number of times uh, along with the fan. That all came out of this, uh, this refrigerator whenever I uh, decommissioned it. And I thought how funny would it be to take a refrigerator compressor and guts and turn it into a heat pump but I think it's enough for the space. Um, but it hasn't been all that cold outside in the last two or three days that it's been, two days that it's been running uh, to really test it real well. But it keeps this place warm and it doesn't take it very long to uh, satisfy the thermostat which is set at 70. Uh, it kicks on at 67 up to 70. So um, just to get it running here in the last little bit, I had to kind of open the door up to cool it down a little bit. Um, we run it a little bit high on the head. It's up there around two, probably 290 right now. Uh, refrigerant is propane, and the low sides are around 30 degrees, or excuse me, 30 pounds, which is right around. Um, that's right around freezing, actually. It's pretty low on the low side, pretty high on the high side. I already cut a little cap tube out. I started with, uh, let's see, eight feet of 026, which is guesswork. And uh, I've since gone, uh, took a foot off. So we got seven feet, 026. Probably going to cut another six inches off and leave it alone for a while. But uh, it's going to start raining again tomorrow, and I'm curious to see how that works out. And you'll see why here in a second. This is a monolithic evaporator. It's my term. Uh, you call it an atmospheric evaporator. There's no fan. Uh, it's copper and steel and wood, not a whole lot to it. Uh, it's just two pieces of uh, corrugated steel roofing, galvanized. Um, uh, it was an eight foot piece and I basically cut it in half. Um, these copper lines that are serpentine back and forth, they originally they weren't supposed to be exposed. The top layer is supposed to cover them. Um, but because of the corrugations and everything, it was actually flipped around the other way so the copper would be on the uh, low side rather than the high part, so that the, core, the top piece would cover it all. Um, the way it was going to have to be assembled and screwed, it was going to be too difficult. So I switched to going to the high part so I could screw in the low parts there and sandwich everything together. There's no um, bonding other than just the mechanical bonding of these two pieces being squeezed together. Um, the lines just run down through. And you can see it very you know, quickly frosts up. Uh, so it's about 40 feet of quarter inch tubing there. The, uh, there's a 3 16th line that runs from the uh, condenser, goes through a replaceable liquid filter dryer, then into the cap tube. You can see that the cap tube is, uh, is quarter inch tubing, uh, silver soldered on both ends and then it's flared so I can easily pull this apart and change the length of the cap tube when I want. Um, I try to avoid some flares in this one because they can be troublesome. Uh, where it comes out of the top, it's a little... Uh, accumulator that I made. I did a little video on metal spinning and it was just sitting on the shelf so I decided what the hell I might as well use it uh, to work. It I don't know how effective it really is here but I want to add some kind of accumulator and then we adapt into 5 16 to run back. See it's frosting up pretty good going back so we got a pretty healthy charge right now. Um, so the reason I think it's going to be interesting when it starts to rain is you can see the way the frost forms on it. I threw a bucket of water on it yesterday and saw the, saw the low side pressure rise rapidly. Um, and uh, 
you know, everything kind of thawed off pretty good. And then it all refroze real quickly. So uh, once it starts to rain here, we get a good shower and a rain on it while it's running. I think it's going to freeze up into a nice block of ice. Then when the thermostat is satisfied, uh, I imagine some of that, or most of that, if not all of that ice, is going to thaw, uh, whether it's just because of the uh, warmer air or more likely because of the warm rainwater that's washing down over it. So hopefully it's completely thawed off until it uh, kicks back on again. So, uh, so we can see here. Uh, so like I said, I will probably do another little cap tube modification. Uh, in terms of COP performance, uh, I don't have any hard data yet. Uh, I don't know the exact CFM on this uh, this little axial fan. It's, um, it draws about 0.07 amps uh, at about 119 volts is what I get here. Uh, 0.06, 0.07. Um, I'm guessing it's somewhere between you know 50 and 100 CFM, uh, but I'm not sure. I usually get about usually about a, you know, a 12, 10, 12, maybe even 15 degree temperature rise. Um, it seems to work pretty well on that on that front. Thruster also puts out some heat. The other thing, the other, you know, notion here was, well, this thing is strictly a heat pump, with no air conditioning involved. Um, so I just thought, well, I'll just leave the compressor inside where it belongs and get some of that heat too. So um, when I get some more data or I get an interesting freeze up on there uh, on the outside, I'll go ahead and do a uh, do a um, a video on that. Um, I silver soldered everything, uh, largely because I found recently it's super super easy. All you need is a little propane torch um, and the good flux. Uh, this is good, uh, I think it's Stay Bright 8 or something. Um, but uh, because the condenser is steel, uh, I had to use silver solder there. And so I just silver soldered everything. Um, there are a few flares here just to make the connections easy. So if I want to unhook this and move this unit, um, that'll probably happen at some point. Um, and then there's some pressure gauges that are built in. Um, and then just a simple cheap thermostat down there. Uh, I don't have a logger or anything on it. I just have uh, two thermocouples just taking the air temperature difference across the fan. Um, but uh, other than that, it's just kind of a fun thing to play with. And I think the plate outside is pretty goofy and kind of strange. And nobody's asked me about it yet, but I'm sure a few people are curious why there's a big frozen plate leaning next to your, your shed while it's, you know, 50 degrees outside. So I'm excited to see uh, how it deals with the rain and how it, it deals with the, uh, the cold weather when this thing's actually put to some use. Right now the fridge is running um, and with as warm as it is outside, uh, just me coming home from work and being in here, um, I saw the thermostat rise a few degrees, just my body heat, and then with the fridge, uh, this thing wasn't gonna run, so I kinda, kinda made it run. So, well, there'll be some updates. Thanks for watching.